It is always game day in Cleveland. I'm Andy Baskin. He is Daryl Ryder. He is at the Greenbrier. I am with green skies behind me and blue skies, I should say, and green trees behind me. Uh, we are brought to you by our good friends, and you know them and love them as much as we do. They are Bryant and Smiley One, and they are Northeast Ohio's premier heating and cooling solution. Okay, Daryl, you made it to Greenbrier. Um, how are you? You successful drive? Any crazy drivers on the road? I mean, I'm just happy you got there. I got through the mountains without any truckers running me off the road this time. So uh, that was nice. Uh, it went through three massive downpours. Ooh. So, yeah. So Any uh, tunnels? That, no tunnels, uh, but downpours Excellent. are no fun when you're winding through mountains. That's one thing I discovered today. <laughs> um, it, it, I, just, do you have to go through Bexley to get there? How do you get there? I don't even know. Yeah, How do you yeah, get out of there? Yeah. Okay, right, you did. Yeah. yeah, Bexley is right where we split off from uh, – 77 to go 64 east to uh head over to uh where i'm at now which is lewisburg we're one town over from where the greenbrier is in, in white sulfur springs okay all right so what is the agenda for you over the next couple of days here because i know you'll have a couple special it's always game day in cleveland's for everybody too yeah well first of all i made a mistake i should have i guess gone over to the greenbrier so i had the mountains behind me and then you it sure. would have looked like you and i were like next to each other See, I, I totally failure. Blew, I, failure I totally is blew the bit tonight, yes. didn't I? Yeah, you did. Uh, as we uh, as we record this on a, on a Wednesday evening, but um, yeah, but you're you know, where, uh, but you are where all the action is happening. So let me just say that that and that would be the hotel that you're at. Right now. <laughs> so the um, uh, <laughs> let's not get fired on this one. On, okay, yes, that's yes. right. Uh, I. <laughs> I just put pen to paper, Andy. I'd like to yes. make sure that I get this yes. at the end of that. that yes. Um, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they'll hold their first uh, workout down here uh, Thursday afternoon uh, just before 3 o'clock. It's not expected to be very extensive or uh, lengthy, probably uh, a little less than an hour. We'll get to visit with Kevin Stefanski and a couple of players uh, after that. Uh, one thing I'm going to try and do while I'm down here and, and throughout training camp is kind of bring you a little it's always game day in Cleveland training camp edition where uh, I will uh, pick out some of the, the better uh, sound bites. Uh, I'll put them up on uh, social media, but uh, I'll also do uh, a little uh, recap podcast for everybody. Uh, and I'm going to try and do that <clears throat> after uh, every uh, Brown. So workout down here, they'll hold seven practices in nine days we will be off on sunday and i believe on wednesday uh next week so those two days probably well we'll, we'll, we'll see but um and yeah, not so open I'll, I'll to the public and, right not open to the public yeah correct yeah okay. the, it's just uh myself and uh about 20 of my uh colleagues <laughs> from uh, the local Cleveland media that are uh, down here. In fact, I ran into some of them in the lobby as I was uh, walking into the hotel from dinner. So uh, we're, uh, we're ready to go tomorrow afternoon, or I should say on Thursday afternoon, uh, when we'll get our, uh, our first look uh, at the guys uh, in camp. All right, let's go through some of the storylines that are there, and we'll do that throughout the show today. Uh, let's start with Amari Cooper signing his contract. Um, you know, $5 million in incentives guarantees his money for this year guaranteed money up front but i to me i'm still trying to put together the pieces that if you were willing to hold out and he and let's be honest i mean he missed a he missed a mini camp a mandatory mini camp which i don't think is the end of the world had he missed today uh and missed the last couple of days then i think it'd be a much bigger deal and probably be worth sitting out to try to get more out of the deal i what i mean i just your initial thoughts on the deal to me it's kind of ho-hum and um, you know, there are the incentives there and he did get the money up front, but he didn't get extended time. And it does look like the right. future past this season will be maybe perhaps without Amari Cooper. Yeah. And, um, it, it's, you know, the, the Browns got what they wanted and that is they didn't want to tack any years uh, onto his, uh, current, uh, agreement, which will expire after this season. So next March, he'll be an unrestricted free agent. Um, I, I was a little surprised there. Um, he gets the opportunity to earn some extra money. He gets his uh, money this year fully guaranteed, so he's going to get at least twenty million dollars from the Browns. Um, you know, but he, wouldn't he have got I, that anyway, or is that is some of that twenty incentive based? No, I, that's the I, confusion no, he, I think for the for the fan. I, I think 
if I remember correctly, prior to him uh, signing this reworked, restructured, however you want to uh, term it, uh, the, the, the full 20 was not guaranteed. So, um, you know, he, he gets that. Yeah, I think the other component, Andy, he didn't want to have to charter his own plane down here to the Green Prior. <laughs> Probably, yeah, good point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, or drive with you. But, you, but, you had room in the car, didn't you? I, I did, but I don't know if Mari Cooper would fit in my car. That's <laughs> he oh, might have been uncomfortable car. for six hours. <laughs> That's all right. As long as you got your A track and your cassette player working, you'd be good. Cause a bag of cheese doodles and a couple Pepsi's, you're good. Yeah. Not true. Okay. Would, well, I, I do not have an A track or a cassette player in my car. Oh. I promise you. <laughs> Just I, AM. You have an AM only radio in your car. True or false? <laughs> or is that Phelps? Is that Phelps's car? No, they, that's Phelps's minivan. I think you're are getting you, us confused. Are you old enough to remember when a lot of cars just had the AM radios and then you had to buy the adapter yes. for the FM and then you'd have to like mount it on the bottom and it would sit in this thing and then you had to go to one channel on the AM and then um, Audio Vox, I think it was, is what they were called. My grandmother, uh, when she would drive us, she she drove one of those cars that had that adapter. We had a couple and of those we, when I was a kid. We, because we would beg her, please put on FM. <laughs> Stop listening to AM when we're in the car. Ah, and we're still begging people to listen to FM. Um, and she had, and she had, she had, um, she also had an eight track player in her car too. Oh well, then she was pretty hip, man. I knew she, she knew what she was doing. Do you yeah. remember any of the eight tracks she had? Back, no, because she never. I, I'm going to tell you what she had. Touch. She had Bad Company. She had Best of ELO. She had. Uh, Elton John. I'm trying to remember the ones we had. Uh, America's Greatest Hits. I'm trying to think of some of the finer eight tracks. All I know is when there. we would, uh, when we, when, when we would be riding in a car. Anytime uh, the police, every breath you take, came on, we all had to shut up. She had to hear that song uninterrupted by us. Really, it was like one of her favorite songs. Yeah. Yep. Fair enough. I I think she was a hip old lady then. I'm 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 impressed that. Uh, she had fine, uh, fine choice in music. All right. So again, what does this mean for the Browns that they've got this Amari Cooper deal done? I thought you brought out a great point in our last podcast where you were talking about the fact that, you know, Andrew Barry's done a great job of limiting drama since he's been here, and once again, he proved it with this deal. Yeah, it, you know, uh, there's there's no holdout. Everybody reported for training camp <clears throat> uh, when the the veterans had to report. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, w including Amari Cooper, because they were able to get his contract uh, restructured in time uh, for him to do so. He was able to take his conditioning test. And look, they're, they're, I got to be honest with you, Andy, I am expecting a rather boring training camp. And I don't mean that as a criticism. I mean, I, you know, a lot of the, the, a massive chunk of the roster is already spoken for. I think the top 40 spots on the roster are spoken for, if not a couple of more after that. Um, you know, you don't have any uh, real contractual situations that you're dealing with. Uh, we're going to get into some of the injuries now that they open camp with that they have to deal with because uh, that uh, news came out uh, Wednesday morning. But uh, overall, there's just there's there's absolutely no drama. With this football team, really the only question going into training camp, aside from the injury factor, is how much can Deshaun Watson do or is he allowed to do from the start? And to be honest with you, Andy, even that doesn't matter until we get into early next week when the practices really start to ramp up. Hmm. It is. Uh, it seems crazy that next week already is the Hall of Fame football game. I mean, I, I, yeah. it's amazing to me how quickly this thing flies by once we get going. Um, you know, there was also talk about uh, season expansion to 18 again today. So we'll get to some of that a little bit later in the show. It's always game day in Cleveland. When we come back, we're going to go through some of those injuries that you were talking about, Daryl, because I think they're big news. I, in fact, I think they're much bigger than Amari Cooper. It's always game day in Cleveland. Back after this. It's always game day in Cleveland. He's Daryl Ryder. I'm Andy Baskin, brought to you by our good friends at Smiley One and Bryant, Northeast Ohio's premier heating and cooling solution. Daryl, the pup list came out. Um, I thought there were three big names on that list, and two yeah. of them are the chess pieces when you talk about an offensive line at right and left tackle. Doesn't mean they're out for the regular season when that starts, but man, I, I just it makes things really interesting when you look at the depth chart. 
Yeah, uh, both both starting tackles uh, are on on the pup list. One, not a surprise, Jack Conklin. Of course, he's still recovering from the ACL and MCL surgery for, uh, stemming from that injury he suffered last year uh, in the season opening win against the Cincinnati Bengals. Nick Chubb being on uh, pup uh, coming off of his two knee surgeries that he underwent following that uh, gruesome injury in week two. Not a surprise there, but to your point and what you alluded to, Andy, Jedrick Wills Jr., also on the pump list, he has uh, a knee injury. That's uh, certainly a attention-grabbing uh, defensive tackle. Dalvin Tomlinson, another knee injury. He is on pump along with safety DeAnthony Bell due to a shin injury. So five players will begin the season on the active PUP or physically unable to perform list. And basically what this means is, you know, they, you know, they, they can, whenever they pass their physical, they're eligible to return uh, to the practice field. No problem. Uh, in the case of both Conklin and Chubb, obviously we'll see if, you know, Jed Wills, if it's really severe when we talk uh, to Kevin Stefanski and same thing obviously goes with Tomlinson. But when, and um, you know, when, when you talk about pup Andy, um, if they're unable by the, the roster cutdown, which this year is going to be on August 27th, uh, if they're unable to participate until then and they remain on PUP, that would mean they would miss the first four weeks mm -hmm. of the season at least. So, you know, Chubb, Conklin, certainly something to watch. And again, we're going to find out, uh, hopefully maybe get a little more information uh, in, in regards to Wills, Tomlinson, and bell and the not only significance but potential length of those particular injuries and we should mention two others on the uh, the nfi list that is non-football injury uh similar guidelines to the pup there uh basically just means these guys uh are injured as the result of non-football activity um, and, and that is, uh, running back Naheem Hines, uh, with his knee injury, uh, and then, uh, another eye opener there, Greg Newsom, the second has a hamstring injury. And, um, so he, here we go again, uh, when it comes to the Browns, uh, in opening camp with a and couple again, of key just, players having to deal with injuries. Yeah. Just reiterating that Newsom's injury then was not football related, right? That's why it's NFL. Correct. Okay. Right, and uh, and Naheem Hines, who's coming off that surgery, his was a result of that jet ski accident. So that's oh, why that's right. he yeah. is on on and on the uh, the NFI list as well. Yes. All right. So I I mean, when I look at this, the first thing I think of is, oh, what are they doing at the tackle spot? Because obviously, everyone seems to be thrilled with the way Dewan Jones played last year, and I think, and I think you'll agree with this that once Jones steps into that right tackle spot for Jack Conklin, he's not going away, or yeah. I mean, you could also look at Jones and say, well, all right, let's take him over to the left side. Akeem Adeniji, uh, 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 I always want to mess his name Adenijai. up. Adenijai is the other option at tackle. They've got some more depth, but you have to think that Adenijai and Jones are the two obvious guys that are going to get the most amount of yeah. reps with these guys out. And, ja and, and James Hudson will get will get and James Hudson, well. too, yes, yeah, yes. But 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 again, um, and this is where the severity, you know, Conklin – you know, we, we may not see him for a few more weeks, similar to the, the Chubb situation. But um, as far as Wills go, the severity comes into play there because, again, when you really want him to be on the field, Andy, is next week when uh, they start dialing up the practices with 11 on 11s, they put on the pads and, and things like that. That's when you want uh, those guys to be available. So, like, right now as we talk, without any knowledge of just how – severe those injuries uh, may be, you know, it, it's really hard to project at this point. And hopefully again, uh, come Thursday afternoon, when we visit Ke with Kevin Stefanski, we'll get some clarity on the timeline for some of those guys. All right. So I, I kind of, I mean, are you concerned? Should we be concerned sitting here that we don't have either one of our starting tackles to, to start this thing or start getting concerned once you hit the last preseason game or even just a regular season? I'm not worried about it right now because, you know, they're going to you – know, these practices that they're running, Andy, are going to be positional drills, individual drills, technique drills, okay? Um, <clears throat> they're not going to be going up 
uh, against each other or defensive linemen right now. Okay. So I, I'm not worried. Um, I, come back to me the next time we speak uh, with that question okay. and I will have a better answer for you. But right now, as we, as we talk right now, I, I'm not concerned uh, until um, like I said, the details surrounding uh, their situations are clarified. Uh, and then the other one, let's go back to Greg Newsom for a second, because I think that was a curveball. No one expected that. We, I mean, even, you know, we had heard bits and pieces about Jed Wills and maybe perhaps that might be an issue walking into this thing, but I, I don't think anyone, I don't remember talking to you about it, or I don't remember anybody talking about uh, Greg Newsom being injured going into camp. Yeah, it must have been something that popped up uh, between mini camp uh, and uh, you know the start of training camp here. Hence, he is on non-football injury, um, and it, you know it just it 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 seems like the soft tissue injuries, uh, for whatever reason, are always you know popping up where the Browns are concerned. So uh, hopefully, it's not something that uh, is going to hold him back too long because you know between him and Denzel Ward. And, uh, you know, MJ Emerson, I, I think that, you know, as far as the, the front end of that cornerback group, Andy, I, I think it's one of the better ones in the NFL. Uh, and then you throw in guys like Juan Thornhill and, and Grant Delpit and, you know, obviously DeAnthony Bell, Rodney McLeod, you know, uh, up top, you know, that's, that secondary is pretty good. Hmm. Um, I, I do want to talk about Dalvin Tomlinson being out and what does that mean as far as, you know, the interior defensive line, who will see more time? Is it a guy like Quentin Jefferson? Will they give the rookie Mike Hall a shot? Um, you know, I, I, I mean, you already, I mean, you have double O too. I mean, you could move double O up into the front four with Shelby Harris and yeah. Zedaria Smith and, 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 uh, Miles Garrett. In fact, I love the sound of that, but I still, I'm just wondering what your thoughts are <laughs> on, who uh, who will see the most rep time with uh, Tomlinson out? Yeah, and again, um, right now uh, it's uh, you know <laughs> Same the, deal. the rep time isn't all. Yeah, it's really not all that important because again, it's uh, you know positional and technique work here uh, for the first couple of practices. And again, you know uh, t Thursday's practice, Andy, I'm anticipating being uh, between 45 minutes and an hour long, and that is. <laughs> You know, that, that's not a Kevin Stefanski thing. That is a collective bargaining agreement thing. Um, you know, they, they have this ramp up period uh, that they do. So um, they got one workout, one light workout in before uh, coming to West Virginia on uh, Wednesday. Um, and, um, you know, they did the conditioning test on Tuesday after reporting. Uh, the team put out uh, some photos of that. They actually did it in the rain. I don't know if you happen to see some of those photos from the great Matt Starkey, the outstanding Browns team photographer. Uh, but they weren't singing in the rain. They were running in the rain. They weren't singing, I don't think, because that conditioning test is uh, is no fun. But um, you know, I, I, you know, let's talk to Kevin Stefanski on uh, Thursday and see what he has, he has to say, and if he'll illuminate. Uh, the injury situation for us. All right, and I'm glad you brought that up, Daryl, because we're going to talk about that in the next segment of It's Always Game Day in Cleveland. Uh, questions on who's going to call the plays, and I think that's something that uh, Kevin Stefanski kind of teased us with uh, before he took off. Who's going to run this offense? What this uh, offense going to look like? Plus, with the injuries, you've got a new offensive line coach in the season. So uh, all kinds of questions. We'll go through some more of the bigger headlines uh, coming up as the Browns get set to really open up camp and they are at the Greenbrier with, and that's where Daryl is right now. So again, thanks for listening to us on the Odyssey app and watching uh, on YouTube, but we're going to come back. We've got much more to talk about here on It's Always Game Day in Cleveland. It's Always Game Day in Cleveland, brought to you locally by Smiley One and Bryant, Northeast Ohio's premier heating and cooling solution. All right, we've talked about a number of things on this edition of It's Always Game Day in Cleveland. Uh, Daryl, one of the bigger things going into this is who's going to call the plays? Is Ken Dorsey, the new offensive coordinator, going to call the plays, or will it be Kevin Stefanski again? My money, Kevin Stefanski. You? It should be Kevin Stefanski. Uh, because there's no reason for him to give it up in my view, unless it is something that he's looking to get away from doing. That's the only reason, uh, for him not to call the place, but, um, they know, like, let's be honest about it, Andy, they know who's going to call the plays. Um, Ken Dorsey doesn't take the job without knowing the, the full scope of his job responsibilities, right? Just, they don't, they, they, they don't want to tell us. And, 
and I feel like we this is like a broken record. We've been doing this since the first year in 2020 when Stefanski took over. Oh, I thought you were, uh, gonna, I thought we, you were going back to 99. I'm like, no, yeah, you're right. We no. haven't been doing it since 99. It, it feels like we've been doing it since 1999. <laughs> yes, but, it does. Um, you know, when it comes to the offense, you know, when, I remember when Pat Shermer was here, it was a big, uh, you know, uh, topic of conversation when Rob Chudzinski was here because these are offensive-minded head coaches. Yeah. So anytime the Browns have had an offensive-minded head coach, it has been a topic of conversation. Who's going to call the plays? Uh, here's what I'm going to tell fans about that, okay? And, and, and I don't mean to sound condescending, yet I do mean to sound condescending. It doesn't matter who calls the plays so long as the players execute the play that gets called. True. That's the bottom line. Like that, that, Executions that in the out. good way, right? Correct. Executions Correct. in the good way, yes. Yes, we, we – <laughs> um, but, you know, that's ultimately what this whole play calling thing comes down to. Um, you know – Ken Dorsey's uh, helped Kevin Stefanski put some new wrinkles into this offense to better accentuate what uh, Deshaun Watson does well and does best as a quarterback. Um, they're going to allow him to freelance a little more. I'm expecting to see a lot of that here in training camp of uh, you know Deshaun working on the freelancing. Uh, the wide receivers are <clears throat> going to have uh, what are called choice routes. In other words, it's their job to read the cornerback in the safety. Oh, it's not their uh, choice. It, it, and, and depending how that coverage is going, that's going to determine, you know, do they break inside outside? Do they turn on the afterburners and go right up the field? And then it's going to be incumbent upon uh, Deshaun Watson, not only to read exactly what those receivers are reading, but all, and then uh, obviously, uh, you know, be on the same page and, and hook up uh, in the passing game. So, this offense ha is going to have uh, some new wrinkles into it. I think some of the gimmicks and the gadgets that we saw, I think some of that's going to get dialed back. And part of the reason for that is that, let's be honest about it, Andy, not a lot of it worked last year, right? Um, and I'm interested to see what the new blocking scheme looks like up front. Uh, you know, Bill Callahan's down in Tennessee now. They've got a new offensive line coach. Um, you know, they, they want to keep that uh, pin and pull technique uh, that, you know, Wyatt Teller and Joel Batoni are some of the best in the business at, especially Wyatt Teller with the pancakes, you know, 10, 15, 20 yards down the field uh, that, you know, he has become so uh, accustomed to. Uh, you know, it's not often that offensive linemen have highlight reels. Wyatt Teller has a highlight reel. <laughs> so um, it's going to be interesting to see just how much those concepts are going to be retained within the offense. I asked Dorsey about that early in the off season. And he, he did indicate he is a fan of that, uh, albeit he doesn't consider it to be a cornerstone of his offense. Uh, he does uh, feel that it is a, a, an important element that he plans to continue to incorporate. Just we might not see it as much as we've seen it in years past when Callahan and Alex Van Pelt were here. Daryl, are there any other burning headlines going into this camp? Because I'm just kind of going through it in my mind. You know, you solidified your kicker you had your one player that might have been a little bit angry he has decided to you know uh, revamp his contract so he is there there's no issues there you know it's uh, everyone right. knows everyone in the world knows Deshaun Watson needs to play well this year I you know all right so maybe your offensive line is banged up going into that but I outside of that I just don't see as you said in the, in the beginning those massive dramatic oh my god who's going to be the quarterback who's going to win this battle I mean, I don't even think there are that many battles to talk about. You know, you you talk about Dewan Jones. Will he have a chance to start? Okay, help me out after that, right? It's 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 just yeah. You know, I mean, give me the other big headlines here. I think the number one headline uh, that's not Deshaun Watson related, Andy, uh, is health. You know, I, I really do. You know, can they get through this camp healthy? Unfortunately, as we know, and this isn't just a Browns thing. This is an NFL thing. Like. Every team is going to suffer injuries during training camp, right? Uh, NFL seasons are essentially a war of attrition, um, especially for uh, the contenders. You know, uh, your depth gets tested. We saw it last year with the Browns, Andy. All not not just in in training camp. You know, they seemed to get through camp relatively healthy, but then once the season came, they they just became besieged with injuries, starting with Jack Conklin in week two, then Nick Chubb in week three. 
You know, Deshaun Watson got banged up and then tried to come back and then ultimately figured out, well, can't come back and he's done for the year, right? And then they went through quarterbacks like water until uh, Joe Flacco was able to come in and save the day. Um, you know, uh, you know, they had some defensive guys bounce in and out of the lineup here. So it, it's been tough uh, for the Browns uh, when it comes to injuries, but they overcame all that stuff last year. Um, and you know, I, I'm confident that they're going to be able to overcome it again this year, uh, because I think Kevin Stefanski has done a really good job these last couple of years with his approach. Um, I, I keep going back to, uh, the New York jets and the whole Aaron Rodgers thing. And, you know, they, all they would talk about was Aaron Rodgers, this Aaron Rodgers, that we're so grateful that Aaron Rodgers is here. Right. And then what happens? He gets hurt, is done for the year, right? There's that drama toward the end of the season, whether or not he was going to try and come back or whatever. But the reality is he wasn't going to come back. And their season fell apart because their whole training camp was about Aaron Rodgers. And, you know, it, it would be it, it would have been understandable for the Browns once Deshaun Watson got hurt last year that if things kind of fell apart for the Browns, right? But because Kevin Stefanski built such a cohesive team. And I think a lot of that started with last year's trip here to West Virginia and the Greenbrier. Uh, it was also helped out because they had that West Coast trip, uh, you know, Denver and then the Rams. They lost both those games, but ultimately, like, that ended up being a really productive trip for them. So, um, you know, you're hoping that, you know, by coming back down to West Virginia this year, that, you know, Stefanski is able to recreate that team mentality, right, that no – one piece is more important than the other. Everyone is equally important. Everyone's equally responsible. Uh, everyone is being counted upon, right? You have to be ready when your number is called. Um, preparation, all, all those little details that, that go into, you know, ultimately whether you're going to be successful or fall flat on your face. I, I think Kevin Stefanski's figured it out. And so that's why I'm so confident that, um, you know, barring just absolutely cataclysmic events, you know, the Browns are going to be a playoff team this year. It just, it depends, you know, Hey, how it's good is health. Deshaun it's Watson? How and how, yeah. Exactly right. Exactly right. All right, Daryl, we have one minute left. Uh, I would be remiss if you and Evan uh, and Evan weren't ripping me a little bit for my Utah hockey shirt that I was wearing. So uh, just in case anybody was wondering, I am wearing a Utah hockey club shirt, which is, club. these are, this is official NHL gear, by the way. Seems weird, doesn't it? I know. What's what's the name of the? the like so they, they have they it. They haven't still... decided yet. So I'm going to let you in this final minute tell me which one okay. you like the best. How's that sound? So okay, uh, let me grab my list. Uh, the Utah what Ice. Are my choices. Yeah, I'm going to go through them. Utah Ice, uh, Utah Fury, Utah Venom. I guess that could be Salt Lake in these scenarios too. Um, Utah Blizzard, Utah Mammoth, Utah Outlaws. Uh, Utah Yetis, just a couple of these names. I like the, I like Yetis. Um, you know, which one I, or the fight, you know, what one's not on that list. It should be, which one? The fighting Mormons. That's not right. And and, and then, and then they could have a set, they could have a section for fans dedicated to the multiple wives club. Wow. Dude, what year are you living in? What year are you living in? Come on. Seriously. Utah just got the, they just got the Olympics back too. They got the winter. Right, they got the back Winter back Olympics back. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, 30, to what, that. 34. Salt Lake City. They'll get them back in thirty-four. Um, I like the Venom. I, I think been, that's a good name. I I've been to Salt Lake City one time. Beautiful. And city. um, it the scenery is gorgeous, but the sulfur from the salt from the actual the Salt Lake. Yeah. I I can still smell it to this day. So, but that's not just um, that's. That's not only that's unique to cities in the Rocky Mountains too, because like when I lived in Montana, yeah, we would get that smell too. Um, you haven't gone to Utah if you haven't been to Park City. I'll just leave it at that, because Park City, that that whole Heber Valley up there too, um, just an amazing place to go. So, uh, and I, and I just I think you know I think Salt Lake's a, a great city too, and we looked how much they've grown, and are they going to get a major league baseball team somewhere along the way? I mean, they really have done um, uh, they've done a lot as far as kind of 
um, bringing money into that region and doing a lot of really good things for the, the people who are living. Yeah, there. they got so, uh, they got uh, the hockey team there going to play where the Utah Jazz plays. And I wouldn't uh, I be surprised know, with the new Olympics if they get their own arena. And then if they build another, yeah, I arena think that, yeah, hockey. that's that's what I was just going to say is I think that. Uh, a new arena is going to be coming to uh, Salt Lake City before the Olympics It'll be to house both those teams. <laughs> and Daryl will be here to tell you how they're going to pay for it, right? You'll give us all the plans <laughs> on how they're going to build a land bridge from Park City <laughs> through the mountains down. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is it I-90 that goes through there? I, no, it isn't 90. Is it 80? Well, no, A, 80. Is it 70? since you, si- since you brought know. it up, yeah, I did. D- d- Clock is ticking. The Browns have to make a decision here. They're running and, out of time. Why? Right, how many more days? They got. A, uh, they got they, I want to say they got sixty days. All right, Daryl said you're on the, the clock. The, sixty the, days. The end. The, the end of September. Right. End of September yeah. is the end of the third quarter. The start of October is the start so of the fourth days quarter. Days before they figure out the financing, or days before they commit to the venue. Before they commit to a plan, they've got to make a decision: Are they going to renovate, or are they going to build the dome so that then they can tell everyone what they're going to do, mm-hmm. and then get everyone behind the the financing plan? And by the way, I'm still leaning dome. I right there with you. All right, Daryl, you've had a busy day. You drove down from Cleveland, so I want you to go get some sleep. And we want you rested and ready to go for the Browns at Greenbrier as you present our uh, uh, It's Always Game Day in Cleveland uh, vignettes. Probably not. That's a very fancy way to say little reports throughout the next couple of days, right? Yeah, it'll be the uh, it'll be my brownie bites in video and audio form. There you go. Make life easy for you. All right. He's Daryl Ryder. I am Andy Baskin for Evan O'Brien, our outstanding producer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And appreciate you watching us on YouTube and listening to us on the Odyssey app. It's always game day in Cleveland.